he's doing in the earth and what he's doing uh, in our lives. Uh, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Tonight, the title of the message is For Such a Time as This. Uh, this refers to a passage in Esther, uh, chapter 4, verse 14, and I'm sure you're all familiar with it, but I'll just give the highlight of it. Um, there was an enemy to God's people, and the enemy had uh, made a decree that uh, all of the Jews uh, would be uh, destroyed, and uh, all of their properties and income would be seized, and uh, um, at that time, Esther was a queen, uh, was the queen, but she wasn't uh, given an opportunity legally uh, very often to go before the king, a and uh, her uncle uh, sent her a message and said, now don't think uh, that you, uh, just because you're in the uh, royal household, that you're going to be saved if this decree is carried out and all the Jews are going to be killed. Don't think you're going to be saved because your whole family will be destroyed. You will be destroyed and your family will be destroyed if this decree is carried out. But nonetheless, God will raise up a deliverer and someone who will liberate his people. And so he said, for such a time, for such a time as this, uh, you have been placed on the earth uh, in the king's house. Uh, to bring deliverance to your family for such a time as this. Well, this concept really applies to all of us for such a time as this. Uh, there's a lot of uh, things going on in the world, but mm -hmm. for such a time as this, you're on the earth uh, to make a difference. I believe that there are moments, these uh, key critical moments of opportunity that we face every day, and, and we don't want to let those opportune moments go by without taking advantage of them. So uh, Sherry said, seize the moment, take advantage of the opportunities that the Lord presents to you. And we're, we'll talk about different ways uh, to do that. But, but I want to say that <clears throat> a, a good word uh, from, uh, from the Greek uh, that is often quoted about this kind of topic is called Kairos, and uh, it, it's a Greek word, and it means opportune, opportune, uh, critical moment. And so we're going to be looking at that. And Jesus said in Mark chapter one, verse fifteen, he said, "The time is fulfilled. The Kairos mm -hmm. moment. That, the word time there in the Greek means Kairos, and uh, that's the Kairos moment is fulfilled." The kingdom is at hand. Uh, repent and believe the gospel. And, and so he's already declared it. The Kairos moment is here. The kingdom is at hand. And so we need to remember what the kingdom is. Well, it's the supernatural realm, the realm of the Holy Spirit, where impossible things uh, yeah. become alive mm -hmm. and it come into existence. Impossible things impossible things. That's a supernatural realm. Mm -hmm. So Jesus said it's already here. The Kairos moment, the mm -hmm. opportune moment is already here. Mm -hmm. And a good example then uh, is when he called uh, James and John. He walked by James and John and uh, they were mending their nets. And uh, he, he said, come follow me. And uh, so they put down their nets immediately uh, they went to follow him. So this is really a good example of the Kairos moment. For what it is, it's an invitation to participate in God's plan. Ooh, amen. Let me say it again. The Kairos moment is an invitation to participate in God's plan. And so then the next verse says that uh, Jesus went about all uh, Galilee, all the cities of Galilee, and preaching, uh, teaching, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness. So that was his plan. So that's the plan. And the verse right before that then was just simply this, uh, come follow me. And so they had an invitation to participate in the plan. What was the plan? 
that Jesus went about all the synagogues and preaching uh, and teaching the kingdom of God is at hand and he healing all the diseases and all the sicknesses. So they immediately participated in it. They had this invitation. Uh, that's a Kairos moment. And although the word might not have been there, I'll give it over to Sherry. I believe she might have something to say. Well, I just want to sing my little chorus. Okay. Uh, the Lord years ago, <laughs> Uh, over 20 years ago, gave me this little chorus, and um, and it's about his disciples, and it's about what Brother Fred was just talking about, and it goes like this, come follow me, follow me, follow me, come follow me, saith the Lord, follow me, follow me, follow me, come follow me, saith the Lord. And I will make you fishers of men. Hallelujah. That was good. That was good. They had an invitation. Yes. To participate in God's plan. Now, see, there's a, a lot of times, there's over 80 times that uh, uh, this word, karos, is in the New Testament. Uh, more than 80 times. And I'll just quote a couple of the verses. Galatians uh, 6, 9 says, uh, don't be disappointed or discouraged because you'll reap if you faint not. Mm -hmm. So don't be weary. Mm -hmm. Don't be weary in well-doing. You will reap in due season mm -hmm. or you'll uh, reap in the Kairos moment. Mm -hmm. You'll oh, reap yeah. in that opportune moment. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, don't think that these uh, Kairos moments are ordinary moments and that they're just like uh, the other moments of your day. No, it's a it, it's a unique, it's a precious opportunity for you to participate in God's plan in that moment. Uh, and, and then the, another one is First Peter uh, five six, and it says, "Humble yourself, uh, therefore humble yourself, and God will exalt you in due season." So it's a statement that if then, if you humble yourself then mm. God will exalt you in due season or the, uh, in the Kairos moment. Now, these are very much uh, lead people to think, well, there's nothing to do. We'll just keep on doing what we're doing and, and we won't uh, uh, try to do anything else and God may uh, reward me at some point in time. But we need to realize that there, there's a more active role that you have in the Kairos moment because it is an invitation to participate in his plan and you need to respond. Yes, I'm going to participate in your plan. That's what the Kairos moment is really about. And it's not uh, just something out there that you have no control over, you have no input in. No, it's you have a proactive role. Take a proactive role. Mm. You look at the moments. Uh, of your day as you go along the day and you may run past someone and that person might be uh, uh, having problems and that might be a Kairos moment. God may want to use you uh, to reach and minister to that person. You know, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 24 says, don't seek your own good, mm, but seek the, the good, good of others. others. And that's what we need to be doing. But I want to go back and look at our situation. So let's Let's just say I have uh, identified five broad categories of what your situation may look like. And there are Kairos moments in any of these situations, in all of these situations, there are Kairos moments, and we're going to see how to apply those. Well, the first one is if you've got problems all around. I, I suspect we've all been in that kind mm -hmm. of a situation where they're just problems uh, all around us, and it, it doesn't seem like there's anybody uh, supporting us and nobody helping us, and, and, and we may feel all alone and have all these problems and may be overwhelmed. So that's the number one row, and that's the one I'm going to focus on. Uh, how do we participate in the Kairos moment uh, when we've got problems all around? Uh, the second one is things are going pretty well, but occasionally these problems uh, uh, come up and cause us not to be able to have the good life that we would like to have. We, we may have plans, uh, but 
it's ne we're never able to reach our plans because some things, unexpected occurrences happen. So this may be number two, that, that uh, things go along pretty well for a while, but we repeatedly go into uh, problems. Number three is everything's going well. We're blessed. Uh, and, and so we're going to have to look for Kairos moments in, in all of these three in different ways. Uh, number four is uh, what if we have experienced who we are? Well, there, there's been this revelation of who we are by the Holy Spirit it's showing the true self, our inner man. And, and then we that's a Kairos moment too. We, we need to have a different kind of a response in that kind of a Kairos moment. And then the fifth is God begins to show you your future, what's in store for you, what your calling is. And, and, that, and look for a different kind of Kairos moment in those. So we're really going to focus primarily on number one, where we've got problems all around. And so let's look at some people who had problems all around. And uh, a good one to, to look at is to think about Saul and his son, Jonathan. Uh, and uh, Saul was king and Jonathan was his son and the prince, uh, the heir apparent. And, and they were being attacked by the Philistines. I'm talking about 1 Samuel 14. They were attacked by the Philistines. So the army of the Philistine was much uh, better trained and better equipped, and they would come in to the nation of Israel, and they would steal their harvest, and, and uh, they would uh, raid the uh, people and, and take away their food and, and, and just cause havoc all around them. Now, what made it worse? Well, okay, you've got King Saul and his son Jonathan, so they're going to raise an army, but none of their people have swords. <laughs> that sounds like problems all around. You, so you, you're trying to raise an army, but all your army soldiers have are sticks and stones. <laughs> and the other side, why did they not have why did they not have swords? Is because the Philistines had all the blacksmiths. There could be no blacksmiths in Israel. So that sounds like they were in pretty bad shape. Problems all around. But what Jonathan said, he was he had his armor bearer. I'm, I'm in First Samuel 14. He had his armor bearer. They just had one person with him, and even his armor bearer didn't have his own sword. Uh, and so they, uh, Jonathan said, "Well, God can deliver with many, or He can deliver with few." Uh, so he's immediately evoking the presence of God in his situation. Mm, mm, he's mm, not relying mm. on the arm of flesh. Mm. He's relying on God. And he knows mm. that God can deliver just with the two of them, with just mm. with Jonathan and his armor bearer. And so he comes up with a plan. And, and it sounds like a lot of uncertainty in the plan. He said, well, go. The, the uh, uh, Philistines are on this mountaintop and they've got a garrison up there. And, and we're down here in the lowland, but we're going to expose ourselves, just show them that we're down here, and uh, and when they do, if they say, come up to us, we know God is going to call us up there and fight for us, and then we will win, uh, but if they say, we're going to come down there, you just stay down there at the bottom of the hill, and we're going to come down, if that's what the Philistines said, then uh, Jonathan said, we'll just run off and hide, okay, <laughs> but the but the Philistines said, oh, look, the Israelites are coming out of the grave, out of the caves and out <laughs> from under the rocks. And so they said, well, come on up here and we'll show you something. And Jonathan said, oh, we know God has delivered them into our hands. So he's invoking the presence of God in his situation. And, and so he and his armor bearer go up there and they've only got one sword between them. So yep. Jonathan knocks them down and the John and the armor bearer gets rocks and starts hitting them uh, on the head. And, and uh, so they get a victory. These, you know, it wasn't because they had so many uh, soldiers. It was because God was on their side. Now, remember, this is the Old Testament. And uh, we don't kill them today. Uh, we lead them to Christ. And, and, uh, so we do, and I want to make that point that uh, we're, we're under a different dispensation, we're under grace. And so we'll have to take that into account 
when we have problems all around and what we're going to do about it. So what I want you to see that in Jonathan's case, he asked for the presence of God to be with him. And then what happened? See, when you have these Kairos moments, when God is present, he's going to shake things up. There's going to be some shifting mm. and some changes going on. <laughs> and uh, what happened, uh, not only did Jonathan and his armor bear destroy these uh, soldiers in this garrison, but then there was an earthquake. I mean, there was just shaking, shaking all, the all around, and that scared the uh, the Philistines, and they began uh, throwing their swords in the air and all. And, and so uh, people who weren't even on Saul's side, they came to be on Saul's side, and they ran the Philistines off, and, and they destroyed Mm -hmm. uh, they destroyed them. So it was a great victory. And, and why did they have a great victory? It came out of a very difficult situation where, where Jonathan didn't rely on the arm of flesh, he did, but he relied on God, and God brought a great victory mm -hmm. that day. Now, the second example of being in a very difficult situation with problems all around is the story of a Jehoshaphat, and uh, this is uh, First uh, Chronicles uh, chapter twenty, and uh, there were all these armies coming against Judah, and so what uh, Jehoshaphat did, he realized he needed some uh, counsel from the Lord, and so uh, he gathered the people together uh, to see what what God was going to do in that uh, situation. And uh, a prophet stood up. This is really important. Uh, it's important to be around prophets and to hear what God is saying. So when you've got problems all around, how are we going to find out God's plan? Sometimes you need uh, to call the elders. Uh, sometimes mm. you need prophets around you so that they can tell you what God is saying. You, you may be so burdened down with the problems that it's hard for you to hear yourself. Maybe Maybe you're not hearing God plainly yourself. Get around some people who can hear from God. And what God said in that case, uh, through a prophet, was uh, you don't have to fight in this battle. Hallelujah. You don't have to fight in this battle. Uh, the battle is the Lord's and the victory is yours. You stand firm and see the, the salvation, salvation of, of, the, the Lord. of the Lord. And so what is the Kairos moment? It's an invitation to participate in God's plan. Now, what was God's plan uh, at this time for Judah was to stand still and see the salvation of the, Lord, of the Lord because the Lord was going to fight the battle. And he gave them his plan. His plan was really a radical plan. He said, send out the praisers yet first. And, and so the praisers went out first and, and uh, they sang a song, and that is, praise ye the Lord, for his mercy, mercy endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Forever and ever, amen. Hallelujah. You know, that sounded like a radical plan. That was a radical plan, but it was God's plan. And so when you've got problems all around, seek God. And, and again, that's the Old Testament approach, but it's that part still applies in the New Testament, seek God. Yes, Call a fast, a fast, a seek, uh, seek God's face, hear from him. And if you, you're not able to hear yourself, well, get around some prophets. Yeah, spiritual counsel. Get, and in the multitude of counselors, there is There's safety. safety. And, and so do that. And then see participate in God's plan. It's not your plan. It's not the plan of flesh. Uh, and so we see it, uh, of course, under the Old Testament, they were uh, they were killing people, but they we don't do that. We're not uh, encouraged to do that a lot of times in the New Testament. We're supposed to operate by grace. But what would do we do in the New Testament? We seek not the good of ourselves, mm -hmm. but the good, good of, of others. others. So the opportune moment uh, for you, when you have problems all around you, maybe to look for the good of other people. You know, uh, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. yesterday we yeah. were we were counseling a, a young woman who 
who was in this very situation. She had problems all around her. Her, mm -hmm. her family had abandoned her and uh, uh, she had all kinds of problems. She is trying to work. Uh, and trying Three jobs, to, uh, uh, multiple jobs, and trying to study, and just seemed like she had problems on every side. Uh, what told her, what Sherry told her yesterday was go out and find somebody you can pray for. Now, look for that Kairos moment, an mm. opportunity, so you can seek good for someone else. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's just think about this. There are every uh, moment. Every day, there are many moments, and those mm -hmm. moments have opportunities uh, with them. You know, it says, uh, do good and overcome evil. We overcome evil with good. And so if you're doing good, and, and although you've got all these problems, see, the devil wants you to be focused on the inside. Oh, these are my mm -hmm. problems. Poor me. Yeah, Poor, woe, woe is woe me. Woe is me. And whoa, what am I going to do? Well, no, you have to seek the moment. Look at the moment. Seize the moment. There's a moment. You're going to walk by somebody that's in worse shape mm -hmm. than you. And glory to God. You better be aware of that because that may be what God has put there for you to overcome your problem is to help other people. See, when you, mm -hmm. when you do good, there's going to be something that comes back to you because if you sow goodness what what are you going to reap you're going to reap goodness. goodness but if you're sowing oh woe is me oh woe is me I, I all these problems are overwhelming you, you're not sowing anything you, you're just going into a cave that's what the devil wants you to do wants you to give up and and just to think the problems are overwhelming mm -hmm. but you know what god wants to do he has a plan for you amen and Romans 8, 28 says, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and called according to his purpose. So if you know that you're supposed to reach out to other people and when things are the worst for you, that's the time to reach out to other people. Mm -hmm. Get counsel of godly people and, and go ahead and give to other people. Give, uh, look for their good, pray for them. See, well, Sherry and I prayed a moment ago uh, to uh, for the family of that particular woman to be for their scales to be to fall off their eyes so that they could see the woman as mm -hmm. God sees her. And uh, we prayed for reconciliation and restoration of her family. Uh, and, and why was that? Well, because she had called us, told her her situation, and then God had a plan. God wants yeah, to yeah. reverse the, the judgments of her family against her, and, and it's going to take somebody to pray for that, and, and God uh, touched us to pray for her family. Now, that didn't cost us a penny. A and you can mm -hmm. pray for people and that doesn't cost you. And you might say, well, I, I don't have any money to give anybody. If you can seek their good. You can give them a word of encouragement. You can pray for them. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that you can do if you are watching for these Kairos moments. And what is a Kairos moments? It's an invitation for you to participate in God's plan. And you know, God has a plan for the people that you come in count in contact with testimony. all right sherry has something she wants i have to a testimony and i believe it fits right here and that is in my deepest depression in my deepest time of depression i know what deep depression is all about it's darkness it's it's more than going into a cave it's like you're in a a black hole and you can't get out but i know what brought me out of the black hole and that was when i began to look at others and pray for others and call others and, and go and visit other people and, and bring healing. Uh, the Lord brought me out of that pit of darkness and, and he, will, he will bring anybody out uh, if we just seek him and, and take advantage of, of those moments that he gives us uh, to minister to other people. 
And, and I know that that's what brought me out. And anytime I feel like, you know, the enemy wants to put me back into that dark hole, that that's when I immediately, uh, I'm proactive. Uh, I've learned to be proactive so that I, I immediately uh, pick up the phone and call someone and pray for someone. Uh, I go see them. Um, I, I do my giving. Uh, whatever the Lord tells me to do, that's what I do. And, and I believe that he does have a plan for each one of us. Well, and, and another thing that uh, Sherry does is if, if she needs healing, what does she do? She prays for other people to be healed. So she's yeah. sowing healing and reaping, reaping healing. It's like a boomerang. And, and th th that doesn't cost any money. That doesn't cost any money to, to pray for someone to be healed. Uh, to, to lay hands on uh, the sick. So I, I'm not talking about just finances. I'm talking about in every area of life. Your day uh, is includes many Kairos moments, right. but you've got to be proactive and you've got to be sensitive. This is really an important part of the message. Be sensitive to those Kairos moments and, and uh, what is the Holy Spirit leading you to do? See, you can only fulfill these Kairos moments by the Holy Spirit. See, it's the Holy Spirit that is making these opportunities available to you and presenting them to you, but you have to be sensitive enough to move on them. Mm -hmm. And if, if you walk by somebody that needs your help and God has... Uh, intended for you to take care of that particular problem. And it might just be a prayer. It might just be a word of encouragement. But if you miss that, you've missed your Kairos moment because the Kairos moment is your invitation to participate in God's plan. And you're going to reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. and, and so the really important thing is to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And you want to participate in his plan, what God's plan is. And, and he has plans for the people you encounter during the day. And it may be you don't encounter them. Maybe you need to do, give a call to somebody. Mm -hmm. That can be a mm -hmm. Kairos moment. You can give them a call and just ask them how they're doing and, and, and tell them that you prayed for them or you uh, if ask them if there is some place you can pray for them, something that uh, that you need to pray for them. See, I'm trying to make this a very practical mm -hmm. message today. That and I have another testimony. That uh, the Kairos moments are important. They're happening all the time. And many people are missing them because they are not sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And they don't realize, oh, God has an invitation for you mm -hmm. to participate in his plan to <coughs> help people to uh, overcome and to come out of their problem. Sherry has a testimony. Well, just a short testimony here that uh, in your prayer time, the Lord will take you places. If you believe the Lord, he will take you places. He will take you uh, to Africa. He will take you to South America. He will take you to other countries. And he will take you into villages and into homes. And he will show you how to pray uh, for those places that you go. And so in prayer, you can go all over the world. You don't, you never have to get on a plane. You never have to get on in the, in your car. You can go wherever God tells you to go. And I, and I've been in prayer and the Lord will uh, show me uh, an African uh, pastor. And, and one time his wife was very sick. Uh, I saw her laying on a, on a straw cot in a, on the floor of their little hut. And, uh, and so I began to pray for her. And so these are moments that we, we need to capture. We need to uh, step into uh, that supernatural realm uh, where you can, you can go wherever God tells you to go. And you never have to step into your car. You never have to step on a plane. Uh, you can just go when God tells you to go. It may be your family members. You may remember this family member yeah. needs salvation or that a family member needs healing or, and think of, and pray for those people. 
Sherry prayed for Africa for nine years and having never gone, uh, but she had a desire to help the people of Africa and she prayed for them for nine years. And then one day a call came in and said, will you go with us to Africa to minister? And so the doors were open, but see if she hadn't been praying, uh, there were the opportunities. She had opportunities to pray for people she didn't even know, uh, for in nations she didn't even know where she had never gone before. But because she was faithful in doing that, God opened the door for her to go there and minister. And people were healed. I, I blinded eyes were opened. Uh, e ears were healed. Deaf ears were healed. And, and, and many other miracles occurred. Uh, mm -hmm. Not just because she was just waiting for something to happen and not doing anything. No, she was active. Nine years. She prayed for Africa before she ever went there. And, and then there was a woman that came up to her and said, I, I, I've seen I saw you, you I saw you coming. And, and she even drew a picture of her and said, I, I, mm. I saw you before you ever got here. So there are people over there. And I'm talking about on the other side of your obedience that are wanting you to come mm. uh, where they are by prayer or, or whatever. Uh, there are people waiting on you to be obedient to what God has uh, called you to be and, and to step into God's plan, participate in his plan. You have to be sensitive uh, to the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that's opening up uh, those opportunities. And so you be sensitive. And, and when and you, as you go by people uh, and you encounter people on your work, uh, in your church services, uh, in the supermarket, wherever you are, be sensitive. There, there are people you're going to encounter day by day that are going to be hurting and, and they need a touch from the Lord. And you are the person that God has sent there uh, to be his ambassador. Amen. Are, are you Amen. not his ambassador, the ambassador of Christ on this earth? And so you are an ambassador. And so you've got a role and a responsibility. Seize the moments. Uh, step into those Kairos moments. It's not just something you wait on and maybe uh, 15 or 20 years from now, I'll do this or I'll do that. No, this is a day-by-day -day situation. There are people hurting. There are people that you know that are hurting. There are people in your family that are hurting. There are people in your workplace that are hurting. There, there are people that need you and God has one a solution to their problem, and that's you. Oh, he yeah. doesn't have a backup plan. He, he doesn't go along with black backup mm -hmm. plans. He, he only had Christ. He sent Jesus Christ to the cross. He never he had, had a, a backup. Plan, plan he, never, he never had a plan B. It's the same for you. He, he sends you to the supermarket. There's somebody there that needs you, uh, and so you be sensitive. You, you let your eyes uh, look around and see See what you see and see what the Holy Spirit is showing you. Think about your family. What what's going on in my family? Let let your uh, let your senses be mm. sensitive to what the Holy Spirit wants you to do in your family. It doesn't mean that you have to go and speak to them face to face. You may have children that uh, don't even want you to pray for them. Uh, so that doesn't mean you have to go and pray for them. But you can pray in your closet. Yeah, in your Amen. secret place, Amen. you can pray for them. Uh, you've got opportunities uh, to change history. See, I want you to go back to e Esther for a minute. She had an opportunity to change history. It was written down. It was a commandment from the king that all the Jews were going to be destroyed. And she was raised up for such a time as this to change history mm, so like that, that the Jews would not be destroyed and all of their wealth and uh, possessions stolen from them. No, she changed history. She was on the earth for such a time as this. And she said to her uncle, uh, begin to gather the people together and mm, fast mm, for me yes. because I have not been called to see the king and it's illegal for me to go in and see the king when I have not been called to him. So my maidens and I will begin to fast for three days. And I want the people around us to be fasting. What were they doing? They were seeking God. They were seeking God's favor so that she could go into the king and into the presence of the king. And if he didn't put his scepter towards her, show her favor, her head would be 
chopped off at that moment, mm -hmm. but she believed that she had been raised up for such a time as this. I believe that you have been raised Thank up God. for such a time as this. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.